course, let's go to our second story. Uh, that is, the issue of sexual harassment continues all across the country. Now a former aide working for the Congressional Black Caucus uh, is going public saying that Congressman Bobby Scott of Virginia sex, uh, sexually harassed her during her fellowship uh, in 2013. Reese Everson alleges that Scott acted inappropriately on two occasions and is calling for his resignation and wants the House Ethics Committee to investigate him. During that time, I was touched inappropriately and I brushed it off. Things happened that I dismissed because I didn't want to believe they were happening. He said, are you going to flirt with me? I said, no, don't flatter yourself. And I thought that I could lighten the mood in a joking way, but anger flashed across his face and he was disgusted and angry. Everson says after she refused Scott's advances, her career suffered, saying she was blackballed and wrongfully terminated. The Democratic lawmaker denies the charges and says they are politically motivated. In a statement, he writes, a former Congressional Black Caucus Foundation fellow, backed by a Republican operative known for dabbling in outlandish conspiracy theories, falsely alleged an act of sexual harassment against me. I absolutely deny this allegation of misconduct. I have never sexually harassed anyone in my 25 years of service in the United States Congress or in my 40 years of public service or at any other time. I am confident that this false allegation will be seen for what it is when the facts are adequately reviewed. Now, also, folks, uh, on Friday, Anita Hill was tapped to chair a Hollywood commission for eliminating sexual harassment and advancing equality in the workplace. In 91, Hill came forward to testify against then Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas, claiming he sexually harassed her in a nationally televised confirmation hearing. She said, quote, it is time to end the culture of silence. I've been at this work for 26 years. This moment presents us with an unprecedented opportunity to make real change. We have a widespread problem in this country. You, you and, know, I, and I would just add, yeah, go ahead. I think we're really at the tip of the iceberg here. Uh, many stories have already come out, but there are still women who are marginalized, women who mm. are in minimum wage jobs, women of color who may be fearful of coming out forward with their stories because they don't want to embarrass right. people racially. Uh, the, there are all kinds of things at play. There will be people, uh, women in immigrant communities who may fear coming right. out because of uh, jeopardizing immigrant status. So we haven't heard from everyone. But we've heard from enough women to know that this is a severe problem and that it's hurting not only those individuals, excuse me, not only right. those individuals, but it, that it's hurting all of us as a society. Joining us on our panel, Malik Boyd, host of Heart of the City Radio in Philadelphia, along with Victoria Burke, political analyst and writer for NNPA News Service, Eugene Craig III, managing partner, uh, X Factor Strategies, and Sue Zoldak, founding CEO of the Zoldak Agency. Um, in the uh, um, Reese Everson News Conference, one, it was scheduled for a couple of weeks ago, but then it was canceled. Uh, and then Jack Berkman, who says he represents her, then came out and said that he did not represent her anymore. Right, right. And then he came back and said that he did represent her. Uh, and then, um, and, and so, uh, what do you make of that news conference and, and all the drama surrounding that, the allegations against Congressman Scott? So I think this case has a bunch of moving parts, you know, lawyers dropping on and off, um, you know, already sets the precedent. But this is one of the things that I talked about weeks ago. We have to make sure that when women are coming out with credible cases of harassment, that we deal with them swiftly and justly. But then we have to make sure that this doesn't become a political football for individuals to move seats around. And that's that's uh, what the rep is alleging at this point. I mean, what I find to be interesting is that we saw last week Blake Farenthold, yeah. of mm -hmm. course, announce his retirement. Right. Republicans were going, okay, cool. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> but literally. That was not their reaction to Congressman John Conyers. Um, I'm still trying to understand why only two Republican women have come out forcefully and say Farron Hole should resign. Uh, that is uh, Mia Love and Barbara Comstock, Mia Love of Utah, Barbara Comstock of Virginia. So what's interesting here is, again, is how Republicans are virtually silent when a Republican member has been accused uh, and you have uh, a, a payment that was made, yeah. but they're very vocal when a Democrat has been accused, when in fact 
Democrats have been far more forceful policing their own than Republicans are. Well, the Rep Republicans are much smarter about understanding what power is and, and the vote count and everything else. Uh, the Democrats, I don't know what happened with uh, Mr. Franken. They should have never done that. It was ridiculous. They should have got, given him a shot to explain his side of it. He's a comedian, so he's bound to do some silly things. So that played into it. As far as Ms. Everson is concerned, I have to say that, you know, I'm not talking as a journalist objectively. I'm talking as a friend of Bobby Scott's of 10 years. It's completely ridiculous and absurd to me. Uh, this is a person of, Representative Scott is a person of high integrity. And uh, when this thing first uh, incredibly appeared in the New York Times in terms of her being mentioned, which I found incredible, uh, in checking her out, we find uh, her involvement in seven legal cases, including a lawsuit against the Inspector General uh, of Chicago, which is very unusual, in a sexual harassment involved case that seems to have appeared after she was fired. <laughs> no, 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 so no, no, there's no, a no, pattern no, there. No, that, case, <laughs> right. that case, she, she alleged, uh, uh, it, was a, it was a woman who was right, sexually harassed. Right, exactly. So what, what the case actually was a slander case because they put her on the do not hire list in Chicago because she sued the city twice. She sued Chicago Transit and the the inspector general in Chicago, which is highly unusual, but she's involved in seven legal cases, including two evictions in Washington, D.C. So she has no money. So Jack Berkman, of course, his involvement is very suspect. But my point right. is, people need to pay very close attention to the details of these cases, Absolutely. because each case, of course, is incredibly different. This woman has no real-time proof, apparently, of any of what she's saying, so it's just her running her mouth. And Scott's office has documents, not my emotion and my hot air. They have emails and documents proving her to be a liar, it would seem to me. So people have to pay very close attention to these cases, particularly so, after Chuck Schumer, that false allegation against Chuck Schumer, which was an alt-right yeah, uh, right. involved thing, happened last week. And, and of course, it's true what, she's talk, what, what Lauren's talking about when uh, someone alleged that Chuck Schumer uh, sexually harassed someone, then we find out that that was actually a, uh, a fake document. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, I, 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 I agree with what was said earlier. This should not become a political football type of game. I mean, as a woman, we take these, we should take these right. things obviously very seriously, right. but at the same time, in no way should we enable people to try to manipulate the system to get headlines, to get, you know, yeah. people to have to hire lawyers, to put them on the defense. I mean, to play these games, I mean, someone who is involved in seven lawsuits, I mean, that's, that's kind of suspicious because it's not the average person, you know, and so you need to take that with a grain of salt. And, but in terms of your question originally, Roland, about, you know, women in the Republican Party, you know, as the communications chair of Right Now Women PAC, I can tell you for sure, you know, Barbara Comstock, Mia Love, um, Elise Stefanik, we take these um, issues yeah. very, very seriously. And to Mia Love's credit, she came out and said Farron Thole, I think, she resigned. She said that, which is... I, I mean, you know, we're, each person communicates in their own way, but mm -hmm, right. that's not to say that we aren't taking it seriously. So here's the, so here's the, so here's the question then, that is, uh, Eugene, if a member is accused, whether it's Congressman Bobby Scott, previously co Congressman John Conyers, uh, you have uh, uh, Farron Hold, uh, you have, of course, Congressman Elsie yeah. Hastings, who said uh, a settlement was made that he wasn't aware of, um, uh, of course, the, the Democratic from, uh, from Nevada, yeah. who says he's not going to run for re-election. Mm -hmm. So do, does the House Ethics Committee investigate, or do we say, regardless, you get accused, you got to quit. No, I think the House Ethics Committee investigates. Um, there is such a thing as due process in our country. Mm -hmm. um, the con it's a constitutionally protected right, and uh, that extends to the workplace. Um, you know, but also, I agree with both the ladies here on this panel. When you have false accusations made, um, and particularly in the case of Schumer and in the case of Bobby Scott here, um, it dilutes the real accusations. You know, it dilutes the, the folk that are, you know, that deal with the Blake Fahrenholtz of the world. But you have Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You know, it, it, it dilutes the folk that deal with you know the Al Franks of the world, and and you know if we're going to have a serious discussion around uh, you know dealing with sexual harassment, dealing with sexual assault, we have to you know we have to make sure due process is protected. Because but, you're going to have an but, innocent but, man accused. That's the that's the problem. That 10 percent statistic when it comes to false accusations, sexual harassment is uh, real. Those are people behind those false accusations. Absolutely. And so is that there's got to be proof what people say. They just can't be able to stand at the mic and run their mouth and then that's it. But, 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 but Malik, what, what we're seeing around the country though, mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing folks uh, who say, you step forward, you believe the women. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you take, but the question then becomes, how do you investigate it? There you go. Um, because again, we've seen uh, networks, mm -hmm. we've seen 
private companies. We've seen very quick investigations as well. And we've seen women who have been empowered by folks that got rid of you. Saw what happened with Rupert Murdoch right. with Fox made some comments that right. have ticked off a lot right. of women who still at Fox News mm -hmm. saying, wait a minute, how long are you just blowing this thing <laughs> off? Yeah. Yeah. And these women are angered uh, as a result of what he had to say. So I, I, I'm right with you on that. I think we have to swing the gauntlet on the facts first, <laughs> knock out all of the uh, the miscellaneous unproven things, not swing the gauntlet on the career first and then take a look at the facts. But that is also an onus that's placed on the media. I mean, we, we can't carry these stories and trash people until we figure out what is really going on in these cases. Well, and, and nobody ever and, and, seems and, and, to ask that. It's and, like the details of this silly situation is he touched my knee and back. Okay, is that sexual harassment now? You touch your knee and back? It's like the Tavis Smiley thing. He has affairs with people who it's consensual relationship, mm -hmm. and now he loses his job? I mean, that is, well, is that well, harassment? So here's <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. So, well, 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 first, uh, in, a, in a few moments, he's going to be on Good Morning America. Mm -hmm. uh, he hasn't lost his job. The show's mm -hmm. been suspended. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and all so the same things, relationships with Walmart mm -hmm. and also okay. his book publishing deal. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it is definitely uh, mm -hmm. a perilous for him as well. Uh, and, and and that really is this sort of this 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 challenge going forward mm -hmm. because look, you have companies who are making decisions saying, mm -hmm. look, we're concerned about uh, shareholder value, right. image of things along mm -hmm. those lines. So that's what's happening. Eight days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. No. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.